This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap, and joining me as always halfway across the world, it's Jared Morgan. Well, hey, everyone. How's it going? So, we're going to do another top ten list, because you guys enjoyed our last one so much. We figured, let's do a whole series of these and do yet another one. Uh, today's yeah. top ten, though, is going to be... The top 10 tables that we just naturally always play in pinball effects, not that they're the best, not that they're what we are the greatest at, it's just what we tend to always at least play a game or two on while in Zen. Sound it's about what right, we always Jared? walk up to. Yeah, it's what we always walk up to. If they were physical in the, in the arcade, it'd be like, yeah, I'll go have a go in this one today, I think. You know? Yeah. All right. So with that being said, I think we're going to jump right into a table that uh, actually wound up on both mine and Jared's list. And that would be Epic Quest. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I'll just state Epic Quest for myself. It is very close to what I feel a real pinball table could be. Um, there's not a whole lot of fantasy elements on it. Um and as such, it's also laid out like a traditional pinball with lots and lots of uh, insert lights to educate yourself on. Um, it's just a game that the more you play, the more fun you have. And I just always naturally am like, even if I, I'm only going to play one game, I'll play at least one game on Epic Quest. Yeah, it is it is an interesting table. I find that you know it does have the a more humorous theme to it. Um, it's quite lighthearted, which is makes it easy to play if you just want looking for that sort of casual game you were talking about, Chris. Yeah. But you know the the callouts, unlike some titles in the collection, they don't necessarily get tired after hearing them all the time. I don't really feel that about them. No. And you know it looks like a simple game on the outset, but really there's quite a bit of depth to the rules in this table, and you got to read them to actually have a lot of fun. I think on yeah. the table. Yeah. Um, it's a game that grows with you, basically. You just, yeah. you just flip and flip on it, or if you actually want to get deep, you can go deep. Um, all Easy right, so, to learn, hard to master. Yes, so right? very glad yes. that Epic Quest finally made its way to Pinball FX. That's why it's yes. able to be put onto this list and why other tables aren't going to be on this list. Um, all right. Um, <laughs> for our next table, also a table that made both of our lists, I think for different reasons, it made it onto our list, though. Uh, so that next table would be... Wild West Rampage. Jared, I'll let you speak hmm. to us first. Well, it's free. Um, and, okay. And it's about all of, Is that really about the all only of... reason why you go to it and play it? Because it was free? I mean... No, this is this is <laughs> like... I, I think it's... It was free. It's like... I don't know. There's It's a Spellorama, which is not my favorite. No, that's why but, I'm surprised it's here on your list. Yeah, it's more like I was... I don't know. It's fun to shoot. It's got reasonably good feeling shots, but I think I don't know. It it's a tricky one for me. How about you tell me like, what yours like, are? Like I said at the start of this, this isn't necessarily that there are favorite tables or anything. It's just no, what something... we naturally play. Um, for mm. myself, I am not good at this table at all. I no. don't know how to start a lot of things. It is a spell arama which isn't my favorite thing. Um, but that being said, and I'm just going to throw it back up here, it is very Adam's Family-esque in its layout. <laughs> and I have yeah, actually, a feeling that that is mm. what I liked about it so much um, prior to us actually getting yeah. Adam's Family. Uh, it just There's a lot of shots that are very similar to Adam's Family. Um, you know what? That's actually a really good point. And yeah. I think you've just touched on why it's on my list. The other thing I really like about this game is the, the train mini play field. Mm -hmm. um, that's a really cool take on a mini play field. Uh, and I really enjoy that mode a lot in this table. Yeah. Um, all right. So for our next one, this one is going to be my pick. Uh, and my next pick for a table that I just always tend to play no matter what it would be Jurassic Park um, again it's not a table that I am particularly great at but I am able to advance into it a bit 
Um, it, I love the callouts. Like, uh, I don't think they're directly taken from the movie, but they sound really close to the movie um, if they aren't. Uh, the only thing that's really missing from it is the actual Jurassic Park music, but otherwise, uh, the sound design on it is great. I think it's a fun shooting table. Um, it's very easy to just walk into and not be like, okay, what do I got to remember how to do on this table again? So that's why I picked Jurassic Park. So you, you're you on the money there. Um, I was, uh, I'll caveat this because it might seem weird that I didn't pick this one as well. I love, love this table mm. for the exactly the same reasons that you said there, um, Chris. It is... It reminds me so much of the original Data East one, but with actually fun rules that you can play with because <laughs> of that big long ramp that goes around. It has really, it has that DNA yeah. <laughs> from 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 the Data East release without all the silliness in it. But yeah, I I was just just focusing on the Zen Originals group in oh. um in the thing, and I didn't. I, I we we know that we with this particular one in the future. Um, we'll be doing Marvel and we're doing all the other licensed groups. Yeah, we purposely left out Star Wars and Marvel because they each get their own top 10. They're going to get their own because there's a lot going on in there. Um, but yes, if I was looking outside of that Zen Originals category in Pimble FX, this this is probably a number two or number one for me. This is an amazing recreation or amazing table to all play. Right. So this next pick is from Jared, and it's a table that I don't particularly like, but Jared does, and that would be Curse of the Mummy. There is something about this table um, that keeps me coming back. It's the upper play fields because I love them. Um, I love getting the ball up there. I love bashing around on the big bash toys that are up there. It's like about, I don't know, three bash toys in mm -hmm. total, just in the upper play field itself. Um the modes are Spellorama, but this table is unique in that when you're in multi-ball, you can also trigger the modes. So if you stack your, like get your multi-ball ready, you stack your modes, then you just start naturally shooting the ramps. Everything is lit. Everything. And your points just go through the roof. It is a really satisfying stack-based table to play. I will be curious to know if it grows on me more once I start playing it in a cabinet. Because um, I have a feeling that that might change my opinion when I see the entire play field the entire time. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I understand what you mean. Yep. Yeah, there are different camera zoom moments in there which mm -hmm. do take you out of the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I 100% agree. Okay, uh, my next, uh, or the next pick is my pick, I should say. Uh, and that is Butters. <laughs> um, <laughs> I... <laughs> It's definitely the better of the two South Park tables. So if I'm going to play South Park table, this is the table that I play. Um, I just love Butters as a character in general. Um, the callouts on it make me crack up. The modes make me crack up. Um, it's not the greatest shooting pinball <laughs> that's out there. But I'm just, I'm drawn to it. I always wind up putting a game or two in on it. Um, sometimes I have really extraordinary games. And I'm like, ooh, that was kind of cool. And other times it's three and done <laughs> so. it's just chopping wood it's yep. chopping wood um so, you know yeah i i gotta say that yeah if i had to if you put me in front of these two tables in an arcade it would be butters mm -hmm. all day um south park can not get any of my not get any of my dollar coins whatsoever <laughs> if this was sitting in an arcade butters has has the theme really nicely integrated um, and it is, it's a good example of Zen focusing in on just one character yeah. on a table and really understanding that character and really understanding that, um, ecosystem for yep. that particular or the story in that character. So that's the reason why it works. I think. Speaking of a table that, uh, Jared would plunk lots and lots of dollar redos into Samurai. <sighs> shut, <laughs> shut up and take my money. This thing. It is a gorgeous is table. And I was debating. Oh, it really is. But then I realized I don't play it a whole lot just because of that little mini play field area that you're constantly in, and it just drives me bonkers. <laughs> yeah, you. Yes, and uh, you, with that little flipper on the right hand side there. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's lots of mini play field action here, and you, that's not your bag. And we we know this. You don't like mini play field games. Well, it's at not all. just that it's not my bag. It's that it is. You're up there so often, and it's not a flowy shot. It, you have to not, get the ball in there and just kind of randomly whack, and it's it's it just doesn't feel like a dialed in shot. That's all. I if certainly flowed, agree with you. Then I would be awesome. The thing that it. it I have that makes this table so hard for me is the entry from the sheath up into the mini play field Mm -hmm. that I just cannot, I cannot make that a consistent shot. I don't know where on the flipper I need to be hitting to get it up into that shot. Yeah. It feels like I just flail around and and flick my way in there basically. (laughs) But, but the thing I like about this, it's, it's like the champion pub of samurai tables, (laughs) right? (laughs) It, it it looks very much like the champion pub of samurai tables and it's it's really hard as well like you i i enjoy this in five minute challenge because i don't drain constantly oh, and yeah. lose the ball and in that sort of mode it's really fun i think to do well on the table you really need to learn the bounces and learn how the ball trap say that again uh we cut out there uh, yeah, it's. Uh, Learn the bounces. I was saying, yeah, you got to know the bounces and sort of um, just basically learn how the the ball travels around the play field. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, next one is uh, my pick here. It is a table that I think is gorgeous in lighting, and uh, I really have no clue what's going on. <laughs> Castle Storm. <laughs> I really want to know yeah, how to play this table. Agree. I really want I'd to know agree. how to play this table. And I think that's why I constantly try and play it. And then I just go, I have no clue what's going on. I I don't know what starts what. I don't know what does what. I don't there's some weird angles on some shots. Um yeah, but I go back to it over and over again. So I don't know. You guys tell us, is it actually a good table or not? It looks pretty. There's no doubt about that. I don't know. It's it's a spell around for sure. Yeah. Um. And I I just I really love the layout of this table. It's got fun shots to shoot, but it it is I I don't know what's going on either. And yes, you know <laughs> I, I I guess dear audience, I hear you going read the rules, Jared. It's like fine, but it just but it still th- doesn't help me. If you have to read the rules, then that doesn't make it a table that you're just always going to go to. Uh, again, yeah. this is kind of that. You got five minutes. You want to play some pinball. You pop in pinball effects. You go to a table. You don't want to spend five minutes reading the rules. Um, mm-hmm. That's yes. I don't know if that makes yeah. any sense at all. <laughs> no, I think it does. All but... right. Uh, next table is Jared's choice. This one. I don't know. I understand where he's coming from. Let's let him explain it. He picked Excalibur. Excalibur is one that I didn't play a lot in FX3, Hmm. but now it's back in um, Pimple FX, and it's had a bit of a lick of paint and that sort of stuff. And I've read the rules about it. There's a lot going on in this game, and it's pretty to look at. And the shots are fun. And it's there's something about it that makes you want to play it. I actually played when I was sort of thinking about this list. I went there and I, I played it once and I thought, I actually want to have another game of that. So I played it again. Like, again, mini play field, you'll hate it, Chris. I think the <laughs> mini play field actually ruins this table. Um, you think? I, I don't have a problem with the mini play field on Castle Storm at all. Uh, this mini play field, it's that circular play field where if you don't hit the shot, you just wind up sending the ball around and around in circles and hope that you don't drain. Um, I, I don't know. For me, I like everything else about the table except for that mini play field. It's very um, stern Game of Thrones dominating um, that the, the sort of upper left of the play field. Yeah. So maybe that's the reason why you're not digging it that much. But... Um... The, the actual action up there on the mini play field, it's quite fun the way they've done it. Um, and it's definitely digital versus real. Yeah. Like, you know, the, yeah. the knight slams his yeah. um, um, 
thingo down, mace down, and you go, it's like a jump ramp, you know. Yeah. But that's cool, you know. All right, I am uh, done with my top five because <laughs> there was some overlap. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. Jared has <laughs> two more tables that he wants to talk about. Um, and his first one is Sorcerer's Lair. Because I can't count, right? Because you yeah, what? I, I can't. I can't count because <laughs> I can't count, and and I actually picked seven uh, instead of five uh, because reasons. Now, Sorcerer's Lair, it, everyone knows it, um, and it's it, you know the rules are well explained. This the other reason is the rules are well explained in the rule sheet, but they're also I feel once you know what you need to shoot the the instructions on the play field during a mode are actually very well done like they they don't use inset lights as such they're very digital um effects like yes. you know floating ghosts or things like that but your ghosts are essentially your inset lights and i think that's a really neat way of representing um shot flow on the table and this is a really flowy table the shots feel nice nailing them it's got a little mini flipper up of it top um a, a a ramp that lets you you know move around um so there's a lot of good things going on in this table i think and you know that's why it's been around for ages and why they brought it over to pinball effects i think because it's really popular i can honestly say it's a table that i've never been able to get into and i've tried i've read the rules i've given it a go i cannot yeah. care about this table <laughs> as much i really as do I've think tried. <laughs> I really do think it's like it's another one that's easy to learn, but like really hard to master. To get those obsidian and yeah. you know, like completing the modes correctly is not easy. I mean, I've been so, I've been playing this since Pinball FX two, and yeah, it's not, been around. It's been around forever, and I yeah. still I've given it a go every single time. I haven't given it a true go in FX Pinball FX um, to see if any of the new physics make things better for me. But anyway, uh, it does last, feel a lot better. Last table here. Uh, Jared picked this one. Vern's whatever the rest of the title is. <laughs> Vern's blah 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 blah. Mysterious Island. Mysterious Island. That's it. <laughs> you gotta catch those critters. Uh, so this one, I don't. I I was debating whether I put this on my list uh, because there's it, it is it's got small little inserts and there's a few sort of rough edges in the game. But this game is fun when you play it in five minute challenge mode. So when you're just able to shoot around and enjoy this table, that's when it actually starts to um, make sense and you start to learn a bit more about it. And by doing that, I've actually gained a better appreciation for it. Um, it's not a perfect table, but it's a table that I feel like I want to, I actually want to play more and I want to try and understand it because it looks really nice. I and, agree with that sentiment of wanting to understand it and wanting to play more. I've been there on it myself. Um, I debated mm. putting it on this. I just realized that I don't really come to it naturally. It's more like, okay, let's set aside some time and play on this one. So. Yeah, it's sort of like you need to have a desire to play it. It's not like something you just fall into. It's like, no, I really need a taste of that. And, and you want to go there and, and deliberately seek it out, you know? I will say, and I don't have a, a screenshot of it to share, uh, so you'll just have to trust me on it. Um, I almost put Godzilla versus Kong on here um, mm. just because it's a pretty table. <laughs> and it is. It's, of the three, it's the one I prefer the most. Um, mm. And I do find myself just going, we'll just have a game on it. And then I have a game on it and I go, I really don't care about this. And then, then that's the end of that game. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, yeah. that's, why I didn't, that's why I didn't feature it, but it was... It was close to being on here. Um, so anyway, yep. there you have it, folks. There are our uh, top 10 Zen originals that are pretty much our go-tos that uh, we can't help but play a game when we load up pinball effects. Um, why don't you share in the comments what some of your go-tos are? And pretty soon, I think, Jared, we're going to be also doing some other top 10s, as we mentioned. If you have suggestions that are outside of the box top 10 to think about uh, for us doing this we want to do not the obvious but kind of the weird so yeah some you you, you like these yeah so like go and 
give us some interesting challenges that we need to that'll help us dive into the game and look at tables differently because i think and also help other people look at the tables yeah. differently as well like could it be a games with three flippers challenge sure. right or something weird like that you know yep think about it so there you have it uh but that's all we got for you on this one so until the next time for our top 10 bye-bye bye-bye